Uh, hello everybody and welcome back to my office, the nerve centre of Chris Sale Enterprises and where all the magic happens. But this weekend I've mostly been hiding out from Storm Desmond. But that's okay because it's given me an opportunity to work on my website and that's exactly what I want to talk about today. So in this video, I want to talk about why I built a website, how I went about doing it, and give you some practical advice for how you can build a website of your own. But before I get to that, I do just want to touch on a little bit of a contentious issue in our community, and that's Squarespace, and also Wix. Now, those two companies provide platforms for building and hosting your website. And I get a lot of comments, particularly about Squarespace, that people appreciate that I'm not always pushing it. But in reality, my channel isn't big enough to attract a sponsor like Squarespace. And the way that I feel about it is this, I think that they have done a huge amount to build this community. They have supported some of the bigger creators that have helped to put landscape photography on YouTube, on the map, create a thing. And we all love this community and we all benefit from it. And I think that their input into the community should be respected. And I know it's frustrating. You have to sit through an advert for Wix and then you have to listen to a guy promoting Squarespace before you get to the content. But the truth of the matter is, without those two organizations and organizations like them that are investing in the platform, this community just would not have grown to the size that it is. Now. Let's be honest, I would love to be able to attract a sponsor like Squarespace, but that's unlikely to happen. I don't think my channel will ever get big enough to attract them, but the main problem is that my website is built using WordPress. Now, before we get to WordPress, we should just talk about why I have a website in the first place. Now, as somebody who's trying to start a business, it's important for me to have a home on the internet where people can come to find out information about the services that I provide. So that involves me putting up details about my workshops, my one-to-ones, and even allow people to buy prints from my online store. But these are things that I put in place relatively recently since going full time. I've actually had a website for a lot longer than that. And traditionally what it was there for was to allow people, give people a convenient way of getting in touch with me, provide somewhere to host my portfolio, and also somewhere where I hosted my blog. Now I write weekly articles, mostly about the process of transitioning from an amateur to a professional landscape photographer. And you can find my blog at www.chrissale.co.uk. So what is WordPress? Well, before we get to that, let's talk a little bit about what a website actually is. And website is just a collection of web pages that are hosted on a web server. And in order to do that, you could create all of your web pages by hand, by hand crafting HTML, which is the language of the internet. It stands for hypertext markup language. And believe you me, I have tried that and it is an absolute nightmare. And what you actually need is something called a content management system or CMS. And that's precisely what WordPress is. WordPress provides me with an easy way of creating the web pages that exist on the web server that form my website. Now, if you've been following me for a while, you may remember that I used to work in IT and I used to work on some very, very large systems. Systems where the traffic was measured in billions of hits. But today, my website is actually a lot, lot smaller than that, as I'm sure you can appreciate. In 2018, I attracted just 7,000 hits, but my website is growing. So last year, 2019, I hit 36,000 hits, and this year, I'm on track to hit 66,000 hits. At this point, you might be wondering why I chose WordPress over something like Squarespace. And ultimately, the decision came down to price. Now, if I wanted to have a Squarespace website and I didn't use any of the offer codes that some of the larger YouTubers provide, that would cost me about £180 a year. But to have a WordPress website, which I host myself, and the costs include buying my domain, buying my SSL certificate so that I can have secure traffic 
and hosting that website. That cost me £127 a year. Now that is a little bit cheaper, but that's not enough of a reason not to go with someone like Squarespace. But the difference is, I don't just have one website. At the moment, I have three, and I'm about to release a fourth. And my hosting package allows me to host as many websites as I like, so long as my traffic doesn't grow too high. And as we've already talked about, my traffic is relatively low at the moment. Another reason why I chose WordPress is that it is extremely popular. According to their own statistics, WordPress now hosts 35% of the entire internet. That is over 10 million websites. And with that many people using it, it means that there's a huge amount of support from a very, very vibrant online community. So if you're having any problems doing anything at all with WordPress, there's usually an answer to it on the internet somewhere. Now at this point, I should mention that there are actually two versions of WordPress. The first one is called WordPress.com and the second one is called WordPress.org. Now WordPress.com is an entirely hosted solution built upon the WordPress platform. It's actually run by the makers of WordPress themselves. And so that means that they take care of the web hosting, the domain registration, and the SSL certificate generation. And in that respect, it's almost exactly the same as Squarespace. The slight difference is it's actually slightly more expensive. So in order to have a WordPress website on wordpress.com, that would cost you about 240 pounds a year at the moment. The other version of WordPress is what's called WordPress.org, and that is essentially the software that runs WordPress. And what you have to do is you have to take that and install that on your own web server. So that means for me, I have to buy web hosting from another company, and that's exactly what I've done. And remember that my web hosting allows me to host more than one instance of WordPress, to have more than one website, so long as the traffic doesn't exceed a certain quota, which I can't remember what it is off the top of my head. And that allows me, actually my website is made up of two instances of WordPress. One to host my main site, which includes my blog, and the other one to host my e-commerce site where people can buy prints. And the reason why I've done that will come to in a moment. If you look at the metrics for my website, you can see what are the most important pages. And they are my homepage, fairly obviously, my workshops, which is good, my blog, my one-to-ones page, my portfolio, and then finally my about page. So let's talk a little bit about how I've built those up. Now the first page, my home page, I use as an index page. That is there to describe all of my main services and to provide links to the sub pages. So for example, on my home page, there is a piece about my workshops, a very short introduction, and then there is a button with a call to action to go and book your place on the workshop, and that essentially leads you off to my workshop page. Now, I'm really pleased that my workshop page actually ranks as my second most important page because that means that the most people that are coming to my website are interested in coming on one of my workshops. And that's great for me from a business point of view. I didn't actually know that until I started looking at the stats for this video. And simply all that I have done with my workshops page is provide a list of all of the workshops that I've got coming up and some brief descriptions and some of the details, like the number of people that are going to attend, what the date is, when it's going to start, where it's going to be, and a nice image showcasing the location where the workshop's going to run. Now, the next page that I've got is my blog. And as I said before, I write a weekly blog article um, all about my experiences of transitioning from an amateur to a professional photographer. And that's a really good opportunity for me to more handcraft my message and to um, get across my point in a more eloquent way. Sometimes when I'm creating videos, particularly when I'm out on location, you're trying to think about your photography as well. And sometimes you, you get a little bit of, uh, of a mix in your message. Um, so my blog is a really good opportunity to craft that. And I have something like 180 people subscribe to my blog. If you take that in the context of the 12,000 people that are subscribed to my YouTube channel, that's obviously a lot, 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 lot smaller. 
but the people that are subscribed to my blog are, are really, really engaged with me. They are my, for want of a better word, I can't really think of another way of putting it, but my biggest fans, if you like. I hate that word. That's not really what I mean, but I can't think of another word. But they are really, really engaged. And the people that read my blog and comment on my blog really provide me with a huge amount of support. And those are the people that, that my relationship with is probably the strongest. Now, I have people that comment on my videos on a weekly basis, and we have very, very good relationship with those. But it's the people that also comment on my blog where that relationship is at its strongest. After that, my next page is one-to-one. -one. So again, that's a really important part of my business and it's really pleasing to know that people are coming and um, that are interested in hiring me either as a location guide or as a tutor for one-to-one -one tuition. Next comes my portfolio. Now, mm, as a photographer, perhaps you would like your portfolio to be a little bit higher up, a little bit more important. But let's not forget that as a business, what I'm trying to do is to focus on other people's photography. And therefore my photography isn't all that important. So maybe I shouldn't be surprised that less people are interested in my portfolio than perhaps coming on one of my workshops. And then finally, the final page is my about page, and that's the page that's all about me, and uh, all about me as a photographer, as a YouTuber, as a blogger, and as a teacher. And, you know, that's down there. I think that's fair enough. I'd actually think I'd be a little bit concerned if most of the people that were coming to my website wanted to find out a bit more about me, because that's really what this YouTube channel is all about. Now I think the reason why WordPress has become so popular and why it powers a third of the internet is because it is open and that allows people, software development companies, to build additions for it that change the way it looks and the way that it behaves. And the first way that they do that is through themes. Now a theme that you apply to your website defines how it looks. And I actually use an official uh, WordPress theme by the makers of WordPress uh, I think it's called 2016, and I, they release an official one every year. But there are also themes that you can buy, premium themes that you can buy, and you can pay for them. And they, they are fantastic, you know, and they look brilliant. But a word of caution, try not to have a preconceived idea of how you want your website to look, and then try and find a theme to fit that, because that's the way madness lies. It's actually far better to spend some time looking at some of the themes and understanding how they work and what they can do, and then try and fit your content to that. That brings me neatly on to explain why my website is actually split in two, and I actually have two instances of WordPress running. I have one for my main site, including my blog, and I have another one for my online shop where you can buy prints. The reason for that is I couldn't find a theme that did everything that I wanted it to do. And so I used one theme for my main site, and then I used another theme called Storefront for my e-commerce site. So if themes control how your website looks, then you can use plugins to change the way that your website behaves. And I have three recommendations for plugins that you should consider using if you're going to build your own website using WordPress. The first one is Jetpack. Now what Jetpack does is it kind of turbocharges your website. And it improves the performance of your website, it improves the security of your website, and it also provides you with all of the statistics that I was referring to earlier. The second plugin that I would recommend is a plugin called Yoast. And what Yoast does is it allows you to manage the SEO for your website. So SEO is search engine optimization. And what that does is that optimizes your pages to make them easier for Google to understand so that it can place you in the rankings for search. Now, you may remember, if you've been watching this channel for a long time, that about this time last year, I did an awful lot of work to try and get my website to rank for the search term Lake District Landscape Photography. And I used Yoast to make sure that that worked. And if you actually look at the Google's assessment of my site, my homepage actually gets 100 out of 100 
for SEO. And okay, that's not the be all and end all, that's just Google's um, view of the SEO on my website. But I did all of that using Yoast. The third plugin that you might like to consider is called WooCommerce. Now this is a fully integrated e-commerce solution created by the makers of WordPress themselves. And it's what I use to host my online store. It allows me to control the products that appear on my website. It allows me to manage the orders that I receive. And it also allows me to take online credit card payments. And the best thing about it is, it is completely free. The only thing that I have to pay for is a small fee for credit card transactions. So there you go. That's my overview of photography websites and the details about how I built my own using WordPress. If you'd like to build your own photography website and would like my help, then the details about that are on my website. And of course, there's a link in the description below.